Hello, my name is Peter Drahosh. Uh, I'm a uh, researcher here at the Australian National University. Uh, for many years, I've worked on intellectual property rights. Um, and today, I'd like to say a few words about copyright and open access and how these things serve what is really the main game, the, the production of knowledge and, and importantly, the diffusion of knowledge. The diffusion of knowledge is really central to, to progress and to human equality. Um, so let me say a few brief words about the existing model and how copyright functions in that. Now I should say at the outset that in my view, copyright is a, a form of private taxation. It's a way in which publishers basically turn knowledge as a, which takes the form of a public good into a private good. So at the moment, if we think about it, um, taxpayers fund public universities and, and, and the mission of those public universities is to, to research, to innovate in knowledge, to produce new knowledge, and, and then, of course, importantly, to diffuse that knowledge. Now, um, taxpayer dollars are, are paying for this, for this process of knowledge creation. Copyright publishers, um, co publishers rather, use copyright to uh, acquire property rights in that knowledge for a very long period of time. I mean, copyright goes for the life of the author plus 50 or 70 years these days. And in essence, by doing that, uh, they can then charge. So one can see immediately that the public is really paying twice here. Um, once uh, in terms of funding universities, and then they're paying uh, for the copyright price of the textbook. Uh, and as many students know, uh, textbooks are very expensive. But that isn't the only kind of problem that copyright creates. I mean, there, there's more to the story. Um, Copyright creates all, all sorts of uh, uncertainties about the use uh, of material. It's a, comp it's a complicated exercise trying to work out whether some material is the subject of copyright or not. Um, and uh, often people just give up, it's too hard. And, and that represents a cultural loss. It's a, it's a, it's a loss of innovation uh, that's uh, attributable to the uncertainty that, that copyright creates. Now, open access um, is one way in which publishers uh, claim that they liberalise um, access to, uh, to copyright material. And I, I, I do think that uh, open access is uh, a step in the right direction. Um, but um, we're not there yet in terms of the sort of world that I would like to see. I mean, the end game here is a sort of global intellectual commons in which uh, knowledge is freely available. And as I said, that, that's important from the point of view of, of human equality and progress. Now, the problem with open access is that um, academic authors still have to find ways to pay for open access. So uh, to create an article uh, or make an article open access, is in the ballpark of uh, 3,000 US dollars. And to uh, make a book uh, open access is anywhere from 10 to 20,000 US dollars. It's not cheap. So what's the solution here? Well, I think um, what we have to investigate are, are models of genuinely free publication. Because keep in mind, that the public is paying academics to do research, to innovate. And once that knowledge is, is in existence, the economist would say it should be made available at marginal cost. And these days with the internet, that marginal cost is, is pretty close to zero. So to come back to free publication, I think a really good model here to investigate um, or to look at is the uh, ANU Press, 
Now, the press was set up by the Australian National University, and I think it's right to say that it was the first uh, e-press in Australia or, or close to the first e-press. Um, and the beauty of that model is that academics work to produce their books there uh, and so on. And they, they send uh, the, the manuscript to the press where it goes, uh, at least in my experience, through a rigorous review process. And once the manuscript uh, is accepted for publication by the relevant editorial board within the university, um, uh, it's then processed by uh, people at the press and turned into various electronic formats for Kindle and for computers and so on. And that then is available as a free download. Uh, and importantly, it's not just available as a free download um, in Australia. Uh, it's, it's available to anyone anywhere in the world with an internet connection. So the, the ANU is contributing not just to the building of an Australian intellectual commons, but a global intellectual commons. And as I keep on saying, the, the diffusion of knowledge is, is fundamental to equality. And it's, it's fundamental to, to progress. And in my world, uh, in my happy world, um, it would be great if, if every Australian university had an equivalent of, of an ANU press. And indeed, if all universities around the world could find ways to create models of, of uh, the free diffusion of knowledge, you know, that, that would be a, a great leap forward. Um, it would make life easier for, for librarians. It would make life easier for students. Uh, it would give the public really wonderful access to an intellectual commons that, in a sense, they've all paid for through their taxes. And so I think that that's really the key here, is that we need to think about creating a positive intellectual commons that diffuses knowledge for free. That's, that's the main game. Now, obviously, uh, publishers would have a different uh, view from me, uh, but that's what I think about the matter. So, thank you.